A um, lot of changes in the city centre since the 70s. Um, the advent of the Broad Street Centre saw the demise of what was the small downtown LNN supermarket because LNN was a Waterford family, um, a Waterford business controlled by the Torrey family. And there was a supermarket where uh, Broad Street Centre is now, and there was uh, Walsh and Fieldings, which was a a shop, a fashion shop, that had been there for years and years. And the amalgamation of the LNN and the Walsh and Fielding shop created the space for the development of what is now the Broad Street Centre with Sam McCauley's and H. Samuel and Foot Locker and all of that. Uh, so that was a major change. Um, Peter Street as a street disappeared. If you come down from Ballybricken, down past the cinema in Patrick Street, go straight through the lights and walk into City Square where um, Mulligan's Pharmacy is on the left and it was Roger Stores, Debenhams are on the right. That was Peter Street and that continued through to where the Franciscan Friary is. So that street is completely gone. Um, City Square, the creation of City Square as a shopping centre, would have seen the biggest change in property in the city centre in the last 200 years, I'd say, because um, a whole raft of small properties and yards got assembled. Uh, one or two small streets, when you come up Exchange Street to go into City Square Car Park, there, there was a street there, I can't remember the name of it, but there was certainly a small street there. It's gone and that area forms the city square car park. And there was a whole load of people had property which was acquired. Stephen Wadding, who had City Arms pub in the city square shopping centre and now has the pub in High Street. Um, Stephen Wadding had a pub in High Street that got, um, that got assumed into what is now the Broad Street, or the um, City Square Shopping Centre. Uh, Quinlan's Poultry, who now operate on the old Kilmeaton Road, they had a yard and poultry business uh, in High Street. Um, famously, and a lot of older Waterford residents would remember the Troys. The Troy brothers were um, plumbers in Arundel Square opposite what is the TSB in Arundel Square, what was the TSB in Arundel Square, just up from where Alfie Hale has the shops. And the Troys did not want to leave, they'd been there for generations. And uh, Watford City Council um, compulsorily acquired that property, and it took an age to do it. Um, and where a section of City Square shopping centre is today, would have been Troy Brothers um, building and yard. Uh, and that name would certainly ring a bell with older viewers. Um, you asked me about um, characters. Uh, I think an awful lot of Waterfordians will remember Walter Huey, who was from a very wealthy and distinguished Dublin family. He went to a public school in the UK. He had the most magnificent speaking voice, but he was completely um, unconventional and lived rough and was disassociated from his family, um, who were, as I said, a very substantial Dublin-based business family. And I think Walter went to Ampleforth, I think, which would be a school where a lot of the sons of British peers and royalty and very upper crust England would have gone to Ampleforth and the bold Walter was in the middle of that. And it's a bit of a journey from Ampleforth to um, living rough in Waterford. A lot of the guys who were doing that at the time slept in containers which were at the back of the tower which is now the Adelphi Wharf Apartments. And the late lamented Father Sean Melody, who died a couple of weeks or a couple of months back, and others, myself included, used to do a soup run. Uh, June McGrath 
uh, was another one who used to do it, um, to the back of the tower, uh, particularly in winter, in the cold, cold nights in December, January, February, when it would freeze like hell, and the lads were sleeping rough. And I remember taking a bottle of methylated spirits from Walter Huey, and he was drinking that. And you can imagine what that would do to your intestines, but I actually was part of a gang who took that from Walter Huey at the time. And um, he would have been a notable figure around town. Everybody knew him. Everybody knew him. And an awful lot of people either gave him a few bob or food or uh, I know people who brought him uh, to their homes or apartments or flats and would put him sitting at the kitchen table and share a meal with them. And he was extremely interesting company um, because he had worked in a circus at one stage, which, again, if you look at the background, uh, he um, had travelled an extraordinary journey from public school in England in Ampleforth to working for Duffy Circus or Fawcett's or one of those to a container at the back of the tower. And he was the bane of the guard's life in Arts Keen because he regularly uh, passed out or somebody found him in a state that would worry you and the ambulance boys and Walter and the nursing staff in Ardkeen and Walter were all an item to put it mildly because <laughs> the whole place knew him uh, but there was a benign tolerance to him he was um, he was very different he was certainly very different there's a gentleman I can describe who older viewers will remember who you sit in what's now Red Square. He was a very low-sized man. He never spoke to anybody, but he fed the pigeons. And um, people better at memory and with a better knowledge of Waterford than I have, because I'm a blow-in. So, um, no, it's a long time ago since that gale arrived that blew me over the bridge with 69, which is what, 46, I can't believe it's 46 years ago. But anyway, there's a few of them still call me a blow-in. But anyway, we've got used to that and get on with it. But he used to feed the pigeons in um, the square and would get bread and there'd be a flock. There was as many bloody pigeons there then as there is today. It hasn't changed. And he used to sit in... Red Square wasn't Red Square then. It was configured in the same shape, but the, 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 um, it wasn't cobblocked, and traffic drove through it. Uh, and traffic drove up Baron Strand Street and Broad Street in those days. Uh, it was a two-way street when I arrived in Waterford. You could go up and down, turn right at the clock tower coming down the quay, up Baron Strand Street through Broad Street, down into Michael Street and away. There was very few one-way streets. There was a little few, but not many. Um, and there was two-way traffic. You could come down Patrick Street past the cinema and turn left at the lights. Um, and I won't name her, but I knew a lady and her family will know, and a few older listeners will know, or viewers who I've talked about, who had very poor sight. And she really shouldn't have been driving. But she would sit at the lights and wait until somebody blew the horn, and then she knew they were green, and away she'd go. Think about that in the context of traffic today. That's the truth. That's the truth. And eventually, her family were encouraged to suggest to Mother that really it might be safer for herself and certainly the populace in Waterford if she desisted from driving anymore. Um, I'm trying to think. I think that's about as much as I can give you in terms of... Um, characters in Waterford. Certainly Walter Huey would have been, and I believe will resonate with a lot of older viewers because he was certainly different. I hope that's of some help. Thank you. That would be brilliant. Thank you. Um, would you have time to recount the story you told me there about the, the locksmith and the safe? Oh, Kevin Barton. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one question. Remember the, la the man who... You feed the, the, the pigeons. I saw you nodding your head. <coughs> yeah, yeah. He's on the neural going on. The end of yes. Used to be. You asked me um, in the context of characters. Um, next door to my own office in High Street, Kevin Barden traded as a locksmith, and an awful lot of older Waterford people will remember with affection Kevin Barden. He was the only one in town at the time. If you had a problem with a lock, car lock, safe lock, whatever. 
Kevin Barden was the man, and the only man, and he was a genius. I remember we had sold a yard in the city centre and there were two safes that had been left outside and it was decided that the safes should be opened and we went to Kevin Barton and he said he would do it but he would only do it under supervision because he wanted somebody witnessing him opening it in case anybody later said well there was something in there or whatever and he, I accompanied him the first day and he oiled them. These things had been up in the wind and rain for years. You can imagine how they would have been. And he then went back when the oil had worked. And he had tiny, they were like knitting needles, but thinner, much thinner. And he couldn't clearly see into the aperture, but he knew in his mind exactly what was in there. And it forever stays with me, the skill he had in working those little steel rods to get those safes unhinged and unlocked. And I remember he telling me, going out to the county and being brought out by a family to open a safe that had been out in a shed for years. And they opened it, and either in the safe or under the safe, they found a ring. And they said that a servant girl had been blamed for stealing it and had been fired. She had always denied any liability and sort of claimed her innocence. And she left the area with some degree of blame attaching to her or shame or question mark and never came back. And that ring she had nothing to do with. I remember he telling me that. And he was a fund of that sort of stories. And um, he was a lovely, quiet, gentle man that Waterford, um, old Waterford, would have remembered and known very well because, um, well, he was unique. He was the only one in the city who provided the service he provided, I believe. Now, somebody would phone in and say, well, me Uncle Jimmy did it or whatever. Well, if they did, fair enough, I'm wrong. I don't remember Uncle Jimmy. But Kevin Barton provided that service out of High Street because our buildings were next door. And I remember when they were building City Square, the dust and the dirt was horrendous. And I used to arrive into work and Kevin would be next door. And I would see him with the brush every morning and he'd sweep the footpath in front of his place. Four minutes later, six roadstone lorries would have gone back and there was more dust and dirt and whatever the hell else on that footpath than there had been long before he started sweeping it. But, and he never tidied inside. The, the, the building and when you went in you got about three body spaces right because there was just an accumulation of years and years of stuff inside but he knew where everything was he wouldn't let anybody touch anything and he was a genius at what he did he was very very special and a lovely lovely man and I strongly believe that you'll get a response to that when it goes out because um he would have been known to a huge number of people. And I think at different, hugely different ends of the scale, himself and Walter Huey would have been two of the people who would bring back memories to um, an older age group in the city. Thank you. Lovely, thank you very much.